All right, hello, hello, and welcome back. This is going to be another tutorial video for the Solo Scenario DLC, uh, this time on the Brute. Uh, so I'm going to be going over the strategy I use in my Brutal Speed Run to beat this level, uh, but this this can help you if you're just doing a casual playthrough and you want to, want to get his item and are struggling with the level. Uh, but I do highly, highly recommend the Speed Run if you have a file that has high prosperity and everybody unlocked. This is a really, really fun way to play Gloomhaven to try to beat all 17 in a row. Uh, but let's go ahead and just jump on into it. Uh, so I'm going to go through the cards that I get uh, in the Speed Run. So I've got Prosperity 9, so I'm going to level all the way up to 9 on this new character. Uh, I'm going to take Fatal Advance. Uh, Fatal Advance is the card that I take when I play on higher difficulties, uh, but I can definitely see a world where someone had taken Juggernaut instead. Uh, Fatal Advance is really important for my strategy. Hook and Chain is really, really good here. Um, I always take Hook and Chain at, at level, what is it, level 3? Um, I just love this bottom action, being able to move and attack. It's really, really good when you know the layout of scenarios ahead of time. Uh, just because, like, especially opening doors, hook and chain is a great way to open doors if you can do, like, a really long straight attack. Uh, then I'm taking Whirlwind here. If you don't have Whirlwind, if you took the other card, then Overwhelming Assault uh, can do a very similar thing. We mostly want it for this bottom move and push. So Whirlwind is just slightly better, mostly because it's a move four. Then this is the level where if you're playing casually, you probably took Immovable Phalanx. And so your strategy would need to be completely different. Um, so I may make, I may make like another short video just on an immovable failing strategy. Uh, defensive tactics is really really good here. Um, I mean, crippling offense could be okay, especially if you paired it with like a long spear or something like that. Um, but defensive tactics is really really good in this level. And then most people are probably taking frenzied onslaught here. The top of it is actually quite solid um, even without a movable phalanx like being able to move to and attack four is actually really good um, but we're gonna go for selfish redistribution um, the speed is really really good for us in this level and then our level nine card we're gonna take face your end so this is I'm gonna be playing it on um, on brutal difficulty so these will be max difficulty monsters I highly recommend um, that unless you're going for like basically the exact layout I'm going for in the speed run that you play against some lower level monsters because this level is very 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 difficult uh, but these are the cards I'm going to take I just take provoking roar because this speed is really important 10 speed is really good the disarm is also really helpful um, there are multiple times in this level where there will be two enemies next to me and I can disarm one and then do something useful with my bottom like kill with face your end or push into traps with whirlwind then on to perks obviously we want to take all of the minuses and then just add as many cards as we can um, that can potentially do something um, in the speed run I don't take the add target so I'm just not gonna grab it here but if you have it that's fine now the brute deck really really sucks and this is what makes the level so hard all of these modifiers are pretty bad and then you don't have any um you don't have any rolling heals and you don't have any rolling damage so you're never going to get like rolling plus one rolling plus one crit or something like that um but this is what we have to work with luckily there are a lot of plus ones um and so like that's the most frequent card that you'll get but we'll just have to see what happens so for my strategies, I do go ahead and get a pair of blesses. We're going to do a bunch of attacks in this level, and so critting any of those enemies is is very helpful. Then eagle eye goggles are really important here, since we have such terrible um, such terrible modifiers. Being able to always get the better one can save you at least some of the time. Then an invisibility cloak. When you're playing solo, an invisibility cloak is really, really important. Um, I, I don't think this level is really doable without it. Then for hand items, there are a lot of choices here. If you have a long spear, that is a really, really good item. Um, with the build I'm going for, I won't be really be hitting multiple targets. 
ever. Um, and so I want the highest single target DPS I can get. And so Jagged Sword and Poison Dagger are really good for that. Also, the only enemy in this level that can heal are the skeletons. So a wound will eventually kill all of the guards and the archers. Then I bring Boots of Dashing. You just have to have the the extra move three, um, and you'll see why. Um, but you always want Boots of Dashing or Boots of Speed or Sprinting on the Brute. It's just really, really good with balance measure. Then I have very little gold left, um, but we took Quietus, which allows us to kill stun targets. So we're going to do a stun powder. And then I only have 10 left, so I'm just going to get a minor healing potion and a minor stamina potion. Um, obviously, if you have more gold than me, then major potions are really good. If you have access to any of the cure potions, those are really, really good here because... Uh, you can get poisoned by guards, poisoned by the archer, immobilized by the archer, and a cure potion can can be the difference between winning and losing. Also, a moon earring is really, really good to get your, your boots back for, for balance measure, to get your swords back, and to get eagle eye goggles back. Um, is there anything else worth mentioning? Um, oh, and then rings of brutality and rings of haste. Um, especially, especially, especially if you're playing immovable phalanx. Ring of Haste is super, super good paired with Balance Measure. So these rings are generally really, really good on the Brute. Um, but if you're going for this stunning Quietus build like I am, then uh, Ring of Haste isn't that important. Uh, so I think that's everything. Let's go ahead and jump into it. Um, so this level is just, it's Black Barrow. It's exactly the same. Um, the only difference between this and regular back Black Barrow is that the enemies are actually at minus one difficulty. Um, so you will never be facing full level 7 monsters, they'll just be level 6. And then you get two fewer starting locations to choose from, which is kind of annoying. Um, it would be really nice if you could start here the way you can on normal Black Barrow. Actually, I think you... do you have 7 locations normally? I think you do. Uh, anyway, we're going to start with a um, Hook and Chain and Quietus. So Hook and Chain gives us access to a move and attack bottom. And so we can throw our Stun Powder on that attack and kill with Quietus. Ooh, this is a really, really good RNG. The only thing that can go wrong here on turn 1 is if they move at 30. Because if they move at 30, they will surround you. And then uh, since you do a move 0 with Hook and Chain, it won't let you do the bottom attack. And so if they go at 30, you basically just have to restart the round. Everything else is fine. Uh, but this is the best possible case where they um, they didn't move, or where they went faster than me and didn't hit me. So if they had both moved up, then I would go Provoking War with Face Your End. But since this guy is far away, I'm going to go Defensive Tactics um, to immobilize him. And now he might, okay, he could have gotten his ranged card, and then he would have still been able to attack me, but it wouldn't have been a big deal. So we'll kill the Elite. Um, now, this... I'm only able to do because I'm level 9 with the level 9 card, but it is using a lost card to kill him. It's possible to use stamina potions and to kite them out with things like defensive tactics, and especially if you put the poison and wound both on the elite, you can kill him um, without playing a lost card here, uh, which is definitely better. Um, but uh, I'm doing this for speed, and so I play the Lost card here. It makes the scenario a lot harder, um, just stamina-wise. It's a lot more difficult. So now I really want my Poison and my Wound on this guy, so I just went for Provoking Roar. It'll keep me safe, keep my health up, which is really important. It kind of hurts to see the miss, especially <laughs> given how many cards I could have possibly drawn. The only things I've drawn so far are a zero and a miss, so that kind of hurts. Um, but at least now we've got the poison on him, so now we'll deal extra damage. Uh, this is why I bring Selfish Redistribution. Um, it it gives us a really fast card, so we know we, we'll be faster than him. And also the Retaliate 2 is kind of like having an Attack 2 on the bottom. So we're going to go ahead and, and just use, um, use the boots with the move 3. So we moved 6, and then we have Retaliate 2. And so we're getting to attack for 7 with the poison. We'll throw the eagle eye goggles here. And he's going to die. He'll take 1 from his wound, then 2 from the retaliate, 
and one from his wound. So before we go into this next room, we're going to want to go ahead and rest. The card that I lose here depends on how much health I have. So since I am very high health, I'm going to go ahead and lose Selfish Redistribution. The only reason I want this card is to have another card that underspeeds their 15 so that I can dodge a uh, standstill and attack with poison. Um, but since I'm nice and healthy, I don't really need to worry about that. Um, and so I'm going to keep Defensive Tactics, because Defensive Tactics um, gives me a really nice uh, ranged damage source. Um, defensive Tactics is also the better card to have in general, just because if something goes wrong, um, you really want this target too. If you fail to get the kill on the Archer, the target too is really nice. Um, and if the guards give you their ranged card, then you'll need Defensive Tactics to pick, pick off the second one. So we're going to go into the second room here, and this is where we want Hook and Chain with Balance Measure. This is a really long room, and we can just go for a straight shot all the way across, and this is why I needed Boots of Dashing. Because if you activate the boots, that gives you exactly enough movement to make it all the way to the back to hit this archer. Now, we really need her to die, and so this is where the Eagle Eye Goggles are really important. I want to save the wound dagger if possible and we're going to attack her twice so we'll throw the poison on her at first oh okay oh okay well that was fantastic um now she's basically guaranteed to die i don't have to use the eagle eye goggles but i don't want to miss um so i'm just going to use them okay good so she died um she dies as long as you get a zero and a plus one if you use both the poison dagger and the wound dagger. So you're very, very, very likely to kill her, um, especially with eagle eye goggles. Um, but critting her is obviously nice. Now, on these guys, they're going to walk up to me, which is what I want. Um, if they had stood still, that would be fine because I have whirlwind, and so I would be able to move one, two, three, four, and push... Let me push this guy into the two traps um but since they moved forward like this this is this is good the only thing that can go really really wrong here is if they had drawn their ranged card because then they would be standing here and here and the guy i would be pushing would only go into one trap instead of two and that would be a reason you want defensive tactics because uh, this trap is going to deal nine damage so he would have he would have like seven health left and defensive tactics would give you the chance to to kind of pick him down um, and then a rolling push can help you push into the other trap. But this has all gone pretty well. And this is a very good reason to use Provoking Roar is against this 15. So we can just stand still and push this guy into two traps and he's dead. And then the reason we really wanted to save that Wound Dagger is now even if we don't kill this guy on this rest cycle, we can just take a nap in front of him. Like we can get up to this door and and just go to sleep on this guy and he will die to the wound eventually we're going to be spending like five turns in this room and we're going to be invisible for basically three in a row um so he he having wound is really nice against him we'll go for defensive tactics quietus here this way we're going to be faster than all of his move cards um cool so i'm just going to move away from him to get rid of the disadvantage and then get the plus one damage on quietus and so now this will be an attack for three Oh, wow, another crit. That's kind of crazy. Um, so this has been very, very good luck um, on my attack modifiers, but it definitely wasn't necessary anything. He may be faster than me. He may hit me, um, but he wasn't, and so now we're pretty likely to kill. Even if we don't, though, um, even if this misses, it would be fine because we were able to save the wound for him. So go ahead and long rest. Give off all of our items back, and now we can lose defensive tactics. Um, we're going to be using kill cards for everyone else, so we won't have two targets. Now we just need to move four because we want to get to this hex, but we do have boots. I'm going to go for Whirlwind. It just gives me a move four and Fatal Advance. So this room is the most difficult room, and so I've saved most of my tools for it. So Fatal Advance is just going to allow me to kill one of the skeletons straight up. And then I can go invisible, and I don't have to worry about any of the damage coming out here. So we were faster than them, and we went invisible. 
and now we're going to go slower than everyone. Unstoppable Charge is slower than every single card these guys have. So we are guaranteed to go last here. And we're just going to walk into the middle and stun all three of these targets. And then we will use Quietus to kill one of them. And now we Stamina Potion back Quietus. And then next turn, we still have Provoking War, which is faster than every single Archer card. And we can get a kill. Let's kill this one. And then I'm just going to step away from her. Um, this way, uh, like my next turn, I only have two cards, Hook and Chain and Balanced Measure. So I'm going to most likely use Hook and Chain to move to, attack to, and then just do an attack to. Um, kind of unfortunate at this point, I don't have any cards to give me like really, really good damage potential. Um, but here, I mean, double swords work pretty well. So, an attack two and an attack three because of the poison. And she's wounded. You can see that we're guaranteed to win this. Um, we, we could probably survive seven turns against her, given that we have the health potion. And we could just long rest here, um, but I don't need to. I can short rest and guaranteed go faster with uh, provoking roar. And then hook and chain gives me an attack bottom, so why not? Uh, ooh, a mobilized card. Um, the immobilized card is very dangerous, but not something we needed to worry about here. So I definitely got really good RNG on, on this run. Um, one thing that you can do if, if you fail to get the kill on this archer is you can just restart the round and um, change where you eagle eye goggles because you can you have two different attacks you can use it on so you can use that to dodge the miss if the miss comes out on her um but overall that is my strategy for this level so i hope it helped you out and feel free to leave a comment if you're struggling or or if this worked for you have a good one guys thanks